episode 29. We're getting close to 30 people. And I'm hoping to do something very special for the 30th. But on this episode, we will be discussing everything Valentine's Day. This will be the Valentine's Day special. So it's going to be a fun one. So I hope you brought your Valentine's Day chocolates and I guess you can like hold some flowers as you're listening because maybe that'll enhance the experience. To be honest with you, I didn't even know Valentine's Day passed. It was like the, it was the day after and I was like, did that happen already? I should have went and got some discounted chocolates. But I didn't do that. Yeah, I mean, I was my own Valentine. I was my own Valentine, not my own Valentine's Day this year. I was my own Valentine. And I think there's something, not something. I think that that is a beautiful thing. You know, a slap on the back to everybody who's with somebody. That's really awesome that you get to celebrate the day with your significant other. But if you aren't with somebody, I think it's cool to just appreciate the love you have in your life and the love you have for other people, which could be your friends or your family, and just the love for yourself. I think it's just an awesome day, an awesome opportunity to take the time to just appreciate yourself and love yourself. Because you can be your own Valentine. That's beautiful. That you have a good relationship with yourself. That's the most important. Honestly. But yeah. Kudos to all you... All you non-single bitches. You know, I'm single and it's cool. I like that. You know, I just... I'm growing. I'm building. Along with myself. Building myself. Hmm. don't like the word the word placement of all that but I mean I'm growing as an individual and I want to all the things that I wanted somebody else I want to find that within myself and I'm doing pretty good at it but I just it's cool you don't like need to be with somebody to be happy so if you're happy with somebody awesome and if you're happy by yourself that's a wonderful thing so Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, I didn't really do anything for Valentine's Day. I was going to like eat a bunch, like a shit ton of chocolate, but then I didn't. Because I'm sort of kind of on a diet, but not really. It's like my lunch is diet and then my dinner's not diet. You know, it's just getting more difficult. Every- well, it's not getting more difficult. It's just like... It gets boring. Not difficult. It's boring, you know? I feel like me... Me on the diet is like looking at... Like, um, math. Like, somebody put a math problem in front of me. And then there's like... A clown right in front of that. Like, juggling balls in my face. I mean... What would you want to look at there? You know what I'm saying? That's what it feels like. So it's not a temptation, it's just like, oh, you know, how many times am I am I going to have to look at the Pythagorean theorem? How many times? And it's the same thing. You know? Like, healthy foods just all fall in the same category. Like, lettuce and kale, they're the same thing. Tomatoes and cherries, uh, tomatoes and cherry tomatoes, the same thing. But then you have, like, chocolate and then you have pizza. I had like three pieces of chicken and like a a yogurt, but I had to put some Nutella in that yogurt to make it, to make it pop, you know, make it pop. But yeah, happy Valentine's Day. I mean, if you had a nice Valentine's Day and somebody put like sprinkled rose petals all over the ground and stuff like that, you could tell me about it. We can discuss it if you want. I'm trying to think what was the cutest thing. You know, what's like my dream. Um, when I have a husband, I want to go to those, like, odd resorts only found in Pennsylvania and, like, sit in that large martini glass. Like, that's my perfect Valentine's Day.
So if you are ever planning to like do something for me for Valentine's Day, whether it be like a friend or somebody I'm with, I mean, if you're looking for an idea, that's the perfect thing for me. You know, other people might be like, that's weird, whatever. But honestly, how is that weird if it's just literally a jacuzzi but in a different shape? That's not cool to people. Like, honestly, I've always wanted to do that my entire life. I definitely saw that on one of those reality shows growing up. And I said, I want to go up spiral stairs into a large martini glass. And that's really it. I don't need the fancy stuff. I don't need a gold watch. I don't need a puppy. I don't need rose petals leading to the bed. I don't need that. I just want a large martini glass that I could sit in. And honestly, you don't even have to join me. You could just be by myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's what, that's what I like, people. And food. If somebody gave me just a bunch of food and a sweet in the martini glass sweet, come on. That would, you would make my dream come true. So even if you're a friend of mine, you know, and you're like, I want to do something special for that bitch for her birthday or something. Do it and, you know, I could die happy. But that's like the coolest thing. Like I see all this other stuff like, Ugh, you know, it's like the same thing over and over and over again. We get, it. we get it. flowers, chocolate, rose petals leading to wherever, uh, a nice purse. And then it's like, you know, nobody, nobody goes to buffets on Valentine's Day. Nobody goes to the martini glass. Even like a themed room would be fun. I think that stuff's cool and fun. Or like deep sea diving, you know? I'm more of the adventurous type. Or I mean just things that are like out of the norm. Because like if you give somebody like a potted plant for Valentine's Day, you think they're going to expect that? No. Or like what do I like let me see like you gave me some cool graphic tees I mean like that's cool to me it doesn't take much but honestly I do I do want that that large martini glass that that I do but I wonder how does that work you know like, I would think that the weight, you know, of you, you and your man or you and your woman or whatever is on one side. I mean, how does that not tip over? You know, like a real glass. I guess they have to make that secure. But what if you're like, I mean, if I were to get really large and in charge, you feel me? If I were to be like, like more, like a uh, morbid morbid that movie if i were to become morbid could i break the glass i mean is it even glass or is it plastic seeing if you get you get a a bunch of people in there too many people could it crack could it break that would be my concern but honestly i would be very tempted to try it i'm not going to lie so put me in there with a with a bunch of large individuals and I think it will be a party. And I'm much too. So that's not like a... I'm not, I'm not jabbing at nobody. I'm just saying that would be fun. Like, that's my definition of fun and Valentine's Day. Like, my significant other doesn't even have to be there. Like, he could just put me in there with, like, four or five, like, large people and then just see what happens, you know? I'm just gonna stop now because now it's just, I feel like it's getting out of hand. And I've spoke about this for, like, nine minutes about me and this martini glass for Valentine's Day and I just think it's just we're getting off track people I have to I have to rein myself back in <coughs> hopefully that gets the image out of your head um yeah and I mean if you're gonna get somebody balloons you know what I love like people get balloons and it's like oh my god it's my 24th birthday and they let that shit go up into the ether. I googled it. Balloons don't go to heaven. Do you know where they go? They only get to a certain place. And then they pop. And then you know what happens? Multiple penguins die. Not one. Multiple. 
So don't be selfish. If you're going to let your balloons go, don't. Just pop them. I know it doesn't look cool. It, it's not as fun, but you have to pop them. Because you're killing turtles. And what kind of Valentine's Day is that? For the pets. For the animals. Fun for you, not for them. Before I continue with the Valentine's Day stuff, I just wanted to talk about something that I spoke about on the last podcast. And I spoke about how the Redskins, the Washington Redskins changed their name to the Washington football team. And I was thinking about it. And if, like, a group of non-white people had a team and they called them, like, the Washington Whites. And they wore, like, Mary Janes and flannels and were holding cold slaw and chanting YMCA. I guess that's how it would feel. If the roles were reversed. And it's just... I think it would be awesome and funny, but I could understand, like, personally, that's how I would feel about it, but I can understand if other whites were like, hey, 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 we don't like that. I can see that. YMCA, the Washington Whites. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I can, uh, what I really love about myself is like, I, I'm really interested in other people's perspectives. I thought that was the male. Yeah, so it's not just like, I'm right and you're wrong, or like vice versa. Like, I like to listen and I like to see everybody's perspective. And I just don't want to be afraid to share my opinion, which I'm not. But yeah, I, like I said, I can understand. But yeah, speaking of Mary Janes, um, my mother bought me Mary Janes in high school. And those are like those little, those little Shirley Temple-like shoes. And I just, I hate Mary Janes. I'm not going to lie. I hate them. I just don't like the little button and the one little, the one little strap. I just don't like it. I don't think they're cute and they annoy me. And I, yeah, I just don't like them. I like them on babies, but I don't like them on myself. And my mother. My mother looks great in Mary Jane's. But she got them for me for high school. And... It's going to break her heart when she hears it. It's going to break her heart. She bought them for me. And then I used to wear them to school. And then when I got to my locker, I used to put on my old shoes. And I remember one time I came home and then she's like, Where, where are your Mary Jane's? And I was like, oh, um, oh, I wore my old ones today, you know? But those Mary Janes were in my locker. And I feel awful about it. Because I love that woman. But I hate Mary Janes. So if you want to piss me off on Valentine's Day, buy me Mary Janes. Okay, so back onto the Valentine's Day track here. So I work with a bunch of older Spanish women. And... They, like, love penises and, like, penis-shaped objects. You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, okay? I just work there, and I'm just a messenger. But recently, they were celebrating Valentine's Day, and one of them brought in, like, it wasn't even a cake. It was just, like, a penis pinata. And they were all chasing each other around with it. It was like like a pink piñata and they're chasing they're chasing each other around with it. And I'm just happy like I wasn't I wasn't a part of it. You know, I was just I was an onlooker and I was just watching. And I'll never forget the one time it was somebody's birthday. And I work at a warehouse. So it was somebody's birthday and they were like in this one area of the warehouse and everybody I wasn't I wasn't there. I have I've seen videos of it. So they, all my coworkers got into a truck and closed the back of the truck, like where you take the packages out of, right? Where you have the storage in the truck. They all went into that part of the truck holding a penis cake and they closed themselves in the truck. And then when that person came 
to the back of the truck. I don't know how they were alerted. They must have had somebody on the outside. But they rolled the back of the truck up and chased them with the penis cake. And just what, what a sight to see, you know? They were all patiently waiting in the back of a truck to scare slash surprise someone with a penis cake. Hmm. I mean, a bunch of characters that I work with here, but... And then this is one I'll never forget. You know, I wish I didn't have multiple penis stories, but I do have multiple penis stories. So if I don't speak about it, I don't let it go, it'll just sit with me. And I don't want it anymore. I need to share it with the world, and then I could rid myself of it. So, we have to, like, scan items... And then we had a bunch of of dildos, okay? We're going to be adults here on this podcast. But I have to let you know. I need to let you know what's going on. So, there were some mixed ones in there. There were like some purple penises, there were some white penises, there were some black penises, right? So, out of nowhere here, an old coworker drives up to the open garage area. And then my other coworker, like I said, I'm just the I just I'm the one white one. I'm just a token white, okay? And they're all speaking Spanish. You know, my old coworker comes to the garage, he says hi. You know, my other coworker goes up to her and they're speaking Spanish. And then my coworker that I work with, not my old coworker, my current coworker. Goes up to the box of penises, right? And she grabs a black penis. I'm just doing this for the visual people. Don't be like, oh, we're going to cancel her. My career didn't even start yet. And I'm just, I'm just giving you the visual here. She takes the penis. And I've seen this with my own eyes. She put her arm back and she threw it. Out of the garage, out of the garage doors, threw it to my coworker, my old coworker. She caught it. And she started up her car and she raced out. And I just. There's not much to say about it. But I'm hoping now that this image of. A six-year-old Spanish woman holding a dildo and throwing it to another six-year-old Spanish woman. I hope that now I can rid myself of that thought. You know, and imagine if I was in the middle of that. If I was just walking and throwing something in the trash or something. And I get a hit in the head with that. It all just happened so fast. I'm like speechless. There's not there's not really much much else for me to say about that situation. In a way it's funny, but in a way it's scary. But you know, I'm happy I saw it. I'm not going to lie. I'm happy because it was it was interesting. And I'll probably never see something like that ever again. It was like uh what do they say? If lightning strikes twice, it's like a miracle or something. I mean, that's pretty much what I saw. It's like I saw an eclipse happen, you know, when I wasn't expecting it. It's a big deal. Speaking of eclipse, I remember when the when that big solar eclipse was happening maybe two or three years ago. I think maybe two years ago. And I went out during the peak of it. And everybody else had their 3D glasses and their, their protective glasses and stuff like that. And I was at work and everybody went out. They had glasses and stuff. And I went out and it says, do not look directly at the sun. I remember hearing about that. And I was like, this is my only chance ever to look directly at the sun during a solar eclipse. What will happen? And I looked directly at it. And then I was paranoid for weeks looking up. Should I have looked at the uh, solar eclipse directly, like directly on? Should I have looked directly at the solar eclipse? And they're like, no, you know, you probably gave yourself permanent eye damage. You won't even know it until you're older and this and that. And I was like, oh no. 
Oh no. And I was just so nervous about it. And for weeks, probably months, I was just, just so nervous about it. Like I did permanent eye damage. And maybe to this day, I don't know. I got two astigmatisms. Maybe that all began, maybe that all happened because of the eclipse. They said, don't look right at it unless you have protective. And I looked right at it. Because I said, when am I going to get this opportunity to do it again? And it's also like, you know, hey, you said I can't, I will. And I did. But it terrifies me. That thought still continues to terrify me. Like the thought of the penis being, in, being thrown back and forth. That also scares me. You know, why does salad exist? They're just leaves. Like who said, let me eat these leaves. You know, wouldn't that be like a prehistoric kind of idea? And now that it's still here till today. And now we have kale, which is just lettuce. Or lettuce's cousin. I also remember I went foraging in Central Park once and I did a video with this uh, world famous forager. It's on my YouTube so you can check that out. It's a really fun time. It's called, um, just go to my YouTube because I don't remember the exact name. But that's Mary Grace Sapran, C-Z-A-P-R-A-N. And we were foraging in Central Park. So, you know, foraging means like looking for food that you can eat. And we were, like, looking through these leaves and stuff like that. I almost ate a poisonous leaf. I was, like, already, it was already in my mouth. And I was, like, can I eat this? And he was, like, no, you can't eat that. And I, like, almost ate it and almost died. And I was also, like, will willing to risk it for the biscuit because I was on film. And when, when I'm being filmed, it's, like, I have more of, it's, like, you know, when, when they say you're drunk, you're, like, more willing to do crazy things. Like, that's me when I'm being filmed. So I was going to eat this mushroom. And the guy was, like, thank God you didn't eat that. You would have died. Because it was like a poisonous, volatile mushroom. He's saying that there was more like poisonous elements in there than like rocket fuel. And what what really perturbs me is the fact that we were eating these little, little, little lettuce guys. They look like little kales, right? We were eating them. And after I ate one, I realized there was a piece of shit right next to it. Because it was in Central Park. And it's also something I try to forget. Because I ate it and then I realized there was a piece of shit there. And it was too late. It was all too late. There was no throwing up. I don't know how to do that anyway. I don't know how to, I don't know how to throw up on purpose. I've never stuck my finger back there and touched the hangy ball to, to release the throw up. I've never done it. But it perturbs me. And sometimes I get nightmares about it. I watched Malcolm and Marie, and I thought the writing for that movie was amazing. And I definitely think it's going to get Oscar buzz. Oscar buzz. I really do think it's going to get some kind of Oscar nomination. Um, to give you, like, a basic premise without ruining anything for you, it's... Uh, about this couple, it's uh, Zendaya. I've been saying Zendaya this whole time. But I swear that's how they said it on Disney. Hi, I'm Zendaya and you're listening to- I swear that's how she said it. Now it's Zendaya. Or maybe it was the whole time, but I, I didn't know. And I still say Zendaya. But uh, apparently it's Zendaya. And her... Um, the guy who plays her love interest is Denzel Washington's son. Robert Washington Jr.? I think that's his name. Something like that. I don't know his first name. But, yeah, they're both extremely talented. Extremely talented. Uh, you really felt their emotions while watching the movie. And, uh, like I said, I, I really enjoyed the acting. I enjoyed the writing. I really enjoyed the story. Uh, they filmed it all in one place, which was like in the house and around the house. And people are saying, oh, it's just like about two people arguing. And that's that's the main premise. Yeah, it's two people arguing. But what they talk about in between everything is really interesting. And they mentioned a lot of other films in the movie. So that was very interesting. And then it was cool because it was serious, but then... There was times where you laughed. Like, it, it was it was funny, but 
kept the seriousness of the movie intact, which is really cool. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was really good. And I I will bet... I always say my life savings. You know, I'll bet my life savings because I'm betting to nobody. What are you going to do to me? What are you going to say, oh, you bet us, meaning who? If that's the case, I would have to split my money between everybody who listens. And it's just not going to happen. None of you are getting my money. So I can bet my whole life savings. I'm going to bet my whole life savings that that movie's going to get some kind of Oscar nom. Moving on. Speaking of movies, uh, I watched the movie with my friend. And then she was like, just out of nowhere. Because we were talking about, somehow Ryan Gosling came up. And she was like, do you remember back in like sixth grade when we were watching Remember the Titans and Ryan Gosling came on the screen and he took off his shirt and then you raise your hand and asked the teacher to go back so you could see him shirtless again? And it's so crazy because I didn't even remember that until she brought it up. And it just shows what a character. What Like I, I laughed at my previous self. The fact that young Mary Grace was doing that. At a young age. And I remember a bunch of people told me after that class. They are like, that was so cool you did that. We got to see him shirtless again. And I know. I'm cool as hell. And honestly, that's like contradictory. Because hell is hot. So I'm cool as hot. Which would mean not cool. But you know it. If you're on episode 29 of this podcast, you must think I'm cool. Or someone entertaining. But yeah, I was always, um, always up to something. Always up to something. Um, yeah, and then I remember one time I was, I thought it would be so cool if I would lay on my teacher's desk while she was gone. And do that pose that they do in all the movies when somebody's like, um, about to engage in like a sexual activity. Like they lay sideways and do like the Bob Saget pose and they smile. And that's what I was doing. And I crossed my legs and everything. And then I thought the teacher was going to be gone for at least like maybe two minutes. Where I could just do that and then hop off and everything would have been fine. And she came in and she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing on my desk? Get off there. Get off there. And she like shooed me off. And then my punishment was to go stare at the wall for 20 minutes. And it was like she made sure my nose was to the wall. So I had to stare at the wall for 20 minutes. And, uh, I mean, that was really cool. Like, now that I look back and I'm like, wow, that, that kid was cool. She was something else. And everybody else told me, like, that, that was cool what you did. That was cool what you did. But definitely one of the coolest things by far that I've done was, I remember. I remember, I remember. In high school, I was like, I want to make something. I want to make, like, a saying stick. And I said, I'm going to keep saying, Great Barrier Reef. I'm just going to say it over and over and over again until somebody starts saying it. And I kept saying, Great Barrier Reef. Great Barrier Reef. Great Barrier Reef. I sound like Mickey there for a minute. I don't know why. I, you know, I definitely just said it in my voice when I was saying it. I, was, I would be like, Great Barrier Reef. Great Barrier Reef. And I remember the, like, the coolest kid, one of the coolest kids in the class. I'll never forget it. I was walking by and she dropped something and she said, Great Barrier Reef. And I said, I did it. I accomplished. I feel so accomplished. And that was in high school, people. That was in high school. This is my life. And you should try saying it. It's a really, it's a really fun term. Great Barrier Reef. When you drop something, when you're excited, when you're mad, when you're angry. Great Barrier Reef. Great Barrier Reef. I don't even know. I don't even know where I was going with that now. I see you. I feel you. <laughs> that breath at the end. But I can't get that song out of my head. They were playing that earlier at work and it was um, one of my coworkers and my boss were like standing next to each other and it was funny with that song playing in the back and it just made me laugh. 
This is what I laugh at. This is it. I see. Yeah, and there's a uh, there's this place. There's this place, people. Uh, my dad's from Brooklyn, and he's from Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and they have a poop factory there. And when we were children, my dad wanted to take us there. Me and my little sister for Valentine's Day, he wanted to take us there. And we never went. And he even bought us poop shirts. It was like, I heart poop. He got us both like poop shirts. They were brown and they had like the, a brown poo on it. And he wanted to take us. And we're like, no, 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 we don't want to go. And you know, now I wish I would have went. Cause that's interesting. It's not, I mean, it's nasty, but it's interesting. I would like to know how these things happen. What, what goes on in there. But they do tours. They do tours. And they're, uh, this year I think it's virtual. Yeah, I read online because I was, I was still interested in it. And uh, they had online that it was virtual. And I was reading the, for some reason I was reading like the, the comments. You could leave comments on the, the article. And somebody was like, it won't, it won't be the same online. So I guess they have like high expectations or maybe there are certain things that they would want or like have the need to see in person. I think the virtual tour would be cool. I mean, it's five bucks and then you don't have to like, I imagine it smells awful in there. And then God forbid you fall. I mean, that's not like Willy Wonka. You fall into the, the river of chocolate. That's a dream. You fall into this river of chocolate. That's a nightmare. Now that's a nightmare. I wonder if they've ever had any accidents like that. Let me see. Because this is this is important, people. I, I think this is... I have to do some research on this. Let's see. Okay. Death. I hope this isn't the case. At Poop Factory. Okay, it looks like that never happened, so... Oh. Oh, no, no, no. It did. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. This is supposed to be, like, a, a happy topic, Valentine's Day, you know? And I was just... I'm hoping it's not real. Hoping that's not a real thing. Hopefully, hopefully that's somebody's, like, fan fiction or something. I remember that was a huge thing with, like, One Direction fan fiction. I don't know. I never got into that. Never got into that type of stuff. Uh, I was watching this show the other day, and uh, there's this thing called cuddling. I never knew that this was a thing, but people can cuddle for a living. You can do it, like, part-time. So I guess there's an app or something, or you meet online somehow, and you can cuddle people. And this guy was like living, living a wall, like off the land, and his job was cuddling. You know, I'm not gonna really get into that. Um, because I, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh, that's funny, or that's like, what is that? You know, that's that's odd. But then I, I was watching some videos about it, and it's like, the people, the reason people want to do is because they want to just feel some kind of physical connection with somebody. And that's sad. Um, that's sad, you know. See, I'm going down the, the slippery slope now again. But yeah, so let me just... I'll move forward with that. I'll move forward. Um, I don't really have any jokes about it. I don't. You know? But I just... I couldn't imagine. That's like so... Like, when I was watching the YouTube video about it, it was like, you know, you become completely, you become, you're like strangers with somebody, and then you become completely, completely vulnerable within a minute. Like, that's so interesting. How human nature is. But I was looking up, you know, what, what these people get paid? $80 an hour. $80 an hour. To hug somebody laying down. $80, $80 an hour. I've never gotten paid eighty dollars an hour. I'm lucky if I get paid eighty dollars a day. And you know what's crazy? I was looking up the video 
for what what cuddling in and it's like called a cuddlist or something like that and it, it says like uh you know because i guess it has to say who it's who it's sponsored by or funded by it's funded by the chinese government cuddlist or whatever they're funded by the chinese government the ad or i don't know i don't know what the connection is but all i know is not i'm not paying 80 dollars an hour for the chinese government to cuddle my ass not gonna happen But, you know, really, really interesting. You know, I looked it up and I was like, wow, this is, this is what people do now. Very interesting. I'm also, I'm just going to move it forward now. Because that, that's really all I, I have for that too. I mean, I don't know what else to say. So I had um, Cousin Shanae ask a question through Instagram. And it was, who created colors? Who invented colors? And of course, I didn't write it down. I did my research. Um, it's not Albert Einstein. It's not Pythagoras. It's um, what is it? Such the name is like in the back of my head here. Who created colors? Not Alfred E. Newman. Give me a minute. Isaac Newton. See, I knew it was similar. Isaac Newton did. And he created a lot of stuff, apparently. I think he created math. Let's see. Isaac Newton. Our modern understanding of light and color begins with Isaac Newton and a series of experiments that he published in 1672. So what did we have before that? Just no, no names for anything? No names for colors? It was just like that thing there. He is the first to understand the rainbow. He refracts white light with a prism, resolving it into its component colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Roy G. Bibb, people. Roy G. Bibb. So he was, the, I guess, the first guy to be like, hey, you know, I, uh, white light with a prism, I guess, meaning like those little crystal things you could buy at like 99 cent stores in Pennsylvania. So if you put that towards the sun, you get all these different colors. And that's when he started, when he created the concept, I guess, of colors. That's honestly what I get to the best of my understanding. I could be completely wrong. Could be completely wrong. And I just, I wonder what people called them before that. Interesting. Okay, why do we have, why do colors exist? Objects don't have a color. They give off light that appears to be a color. Spectral power distributions exist in the physical world, but color exists only in the mind of the beholder. Color is determined first by frequency and then by how those frequencies are combined or mixed when they reach the eye. So color is a figment of your imagination, people. It doesn't exist. I guess how that's how maybe some people are like colorblind or they can only see certain things because it's just to everybody it's different. That's why they had the friggin' dress. It was like, is it red or is it purple? Is it white or is it green? And everybody's arguing with each other on the internet about it. Oh, I swear it's purple. I swear it's green. Who's lying? But you know, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I said, who's lying? One of you was lying. Just to be funny. Just to be interesting. No. Light colors don't exist it's a figment of our imagination that's what i'm getting people and it could be i could be wrong i'm not a scientist if you're coming to me for scientific 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 information i wouldn't quote me in your college paper i wouldn't do it but that was the first part of it and then she also asked why is red red and I'm guessing when Sir Isaac Newton saw the red, he was like, hmm, that's red. And the word red comes from the root word of blood in Sanskrit. Blood, which is red. And the name blood meant red. Supposedly. Supposedly, people. I mean, that's 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 how I got my... That's my research, but how I'm interpreting it may be... Maybe wrong, or maybe right. 
So that's up to you to judge. But yeah, so he created the colors through the spectrum. And then when he saw red, I guess he thought of blood and then that's where the name came from. Or, I mean, he just recognized the color, but the name came from that word, that that root word in Sanskrit. You know, I hope that that gave you a little insight into the creation of colors. I mean, I don't understand a lot of those. I mean, I know the words by themselves, but when you put them all together like that, it's like, what are you talking about? Like the diagnoses of the prismatic combinations and the contributions of the prismatic light. Like, uh, what? You know, I'm going to need somebody to break that down for me. But you know what? You know, if you understand that, if you're a scientist, uh, let me know and we can have a discussion. But as of right now, that's that's what I'm taking from it. I'm going to finish off this Valentine's Day episode with a story. Also another story that I just want to let escape from me and onto others. So maybe you can now take some of it from me. Because I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. So my ex-boyfriend. I'll never forget. He was telling me he doesn't like sweatpants. He thinks it makes people look sloppy. It makes him look sloppy. I was like, all right. So I said, so you never wear sweatpants. And he was like, no. And I said, so. So you sleep in pajama pants? then and he said no I sleep in jeans I said what he sleeps in his jeans I mean if I would have knew that from the beginning I would have rethought everything that would make me rethink everything like what kind of life do you live like you know in Roadrunner when the coyote gets hit with the sign he always gets hit with the sign or the dynamite, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. that's what I was thinking, and that's what I look like. Physically, that's what I look like. I mean, if I would have known that in the beginning, it would make me rethink everything. Um, I'm still speechless. And I wish it didn't have to be that way. But it is. And I'm not being mean, I'm just being honest. And there's a difference. And this is also my podcast. I'm going to be real with you. Maybe you don't want me to be real with you sometimes. Maybe you, you're you probably like, oh, maybe she should have just, you know, kept that information to herself. I can't keep it to myself anymore. I need to release it, okay? I need to release it. And on one date, one date he took me to, right? He was like, yeah, we'll go for a drive. And I'm like, okay. And he lived by like a minor league baseball team and I love baseball. So I was like, oh, cool. Maybe he'll drive me around the empty parking lot and I could see the baseball stadium in the dark, right? Because that would have been cool. I like that. He took me to a parking lot. And we got out. And he said, You know, sometimes coyotes hang out out here. And I was like, in this parking lot? That me and you are in? That you took me to? For a date, supposedly? You took me to a place where I could maybe meet death? For a date? I mean, I thought I said this guy's trying to kill me. A coyote's gonna eat me alive here. In an empty parking lot. But moral of the story is... I mean, if you're dating somebody, I, w- I would ask in the beginning, do you sleep in jeans? Do you like to take people on dates... To abandoned parking lots where coyotes sometimes frequent. So that happened. But I'm alive. Uh, You know, I survived this Valentine's Day. And I'm going to end it off on... I gave you a story and now I'm going to end it off on a phrase. I said this to my sister once as a joke. Because I, I, you know, sometimes do Tony Danza's voice. And I'm like, I'm going to Tony Danza you, you know, in the Italian voice. And she's like, don't say that to me. That's disgusting. And I was like, what are you talking about? It was a joke. I said, are you with Tony Danza? I said, it's a joke. And she's like, no, don't say that. And I was like, what? And then I urban dictionaried 
Tony Danza. And this is what it says. When you're giving it to a chick from behind, you yell out, who's the boss? She'll get confused, turn her head around, and at this moment, you donkey punch her in the face and then scream, Tony Danza. Oh man, I totally pawned Jeff's girlfriend last week when I gave her a Tony Danza. And that says 2005. So I guess people have been using that terminology for a long time? Who would say I'm going to Tony Danza you? And apparently it was the wrong thing to say to my sister. I don't know if her generation says that, but I don't think mine does. And that's an awful thing. If you're going to Tony Danza somebody, don't do it. On Valentine's Day, on any day. And how do they take something so... Like, Tony Danza just seems like, you know, the fun, the fun, nice neighborhood guy. And you're going to use his name? For that? For that disturbing description of a sexual act? That involves donkey punching somebody? I mean, the audacity of whoever did that. Because that wasn't necessary. And you're ruining that show for me. That that show where he's fixing sinks and stuff like that. Where he's like, hey, you, you need help? Uh, I can help you. <laughs> and everybody's like... <laughs> like everybody in the audience. You know, like you're ruining that show for me. Because now all I can think about when I see Tony Danza is, I'm going to Tony Danza you. And then that happens. Or anytime somebody mentions Tony Danza, I can't just have a conversation about that show anymore without thinking about that term. And what happens when you Tony Danza somebody? I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. That this is what's going on. You know, maybe I wish I didn't know about it. I wish I didn't go up to my sister and say, I'm gonna do it. I wish I didn't do that. Because then I found out this. And it's disturbing. So, on that note, I don't think anything else can, I don't think we can move on from Tony Danza. I don't think we can. So I'm going to leave it here. And I hope that if somebody ever tries to Tony Danza you, you show them who's boss. (laughs) Ha 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 ha.